I've seen this question a lot and many of you have also asked, what is the difference between Docker and Kubernetes? Because um, I guess it seems like they're competing technologies, um, but the fact is they're not alternatives to each other. In fact, they go hand in hand together. You could use Docker without Kubernetes and you can use Kubernetes without Docker. However, many projects uh, in best practices actually combine those two technologies to get the best out of both. So to demonstrate that Docker and Kubernetes go actually hand in hand, here are a couple of points for each technology. So Docker is a container technology, which basically means that uh, it creates an isolated environment for applications, while Kubernetes is an infrastructure for managing those containers. Where Docker really shines is actually automating the building and deployment process of applications. So it's actually widely used in the CI CD process. While Kubernetes comes into action after the application container has been deployed and it takes care of automating scheduling and management of the deployed application containers. So overall, Docker is a container platform to configure, build and distribute those build containers. While Kubernetes is an ecosystem for managing a cluster of multiple Docker containers. Here's a diagram that shows exactly where Docker and Kubernetes fit in the whole process. So Docker is mainly used in the local development process. So when you're developing a software application, you would use Docker containers for different services that your application depends on, like databases, message brokers, etc. And it's also used in the CI process to build uh, your application and package it into um, an isolated container environment, as we mentioned before. Once built, that container gets stored or pushed into a private repository. So now is where Kubernetes actually comes into the game. So if you have a development server that is made up of multiple virtual or physical servers, you would basically install Kubernetes on top of those servers. And once Kubernetes is running, you will create a cluster that would actually run your Docker containers on top of it. And this diagram actually demonstrates how Docker and Kubernetes technologies can actually be used together. So now in order to get a little bit more detailed view of how Kubernetes cluster works, so you have a Kubernetes engine that spends uh, multiple virtual or physical servers to create one cluster where the Docker uh, containers are actually running and you can distribute the number of Docker containers across those physical or virtual servers as you wish, where each container will be uh, its own application. And the Kubernetes service that actually enables Docker to run in that cluster is kubelet. So each node in the Kubernetes cluster will actually have one kubelet and the technology that is actually comparable with Kubernetes is Docker Swarm. So as we saw, this is a Kubernetes cluster setup and the Docker Swarm is basically an alternative to Kubernetes, which is a container orchestration tool. So instead of kubelets, you would have services called Docker daemons that will run on each node. And instead of the Kubernetes engine, you would just have Docker that actually spends those multiple nodes that make up the cluster. And the rest is the same. So you have the same Docker containers with the same applications running on that cluster setup. So now that we saw that Docker Swarm is an alternative to Kubernetes, let's see how they actually compare. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each technology? So the first difference is that Kubernetes is much more complex to install and set up than Docker Swarm. And the reason for that is that Kubernetes is actually more complex and has much more power, but of course comes with a higher learning curve, uh, whereas Docker Swarm is more lightweight, however, is limited in its functionality. Uh, so some of the powerful functionality that Kubernetes offers in comparison is that it supports auto scaling, whereas Docker Swarm needs manual um, scaling to be configured. It also has a built-in monitoring, whereas Docker Swarm depends on third-party tools for monitoring. But also to talk about some advantages of Docker Swarm, uh, for example, Kubernetes doesn't support auto load balancing, whereas uh, Docker Swarm supports that feature. And also with Kubernetes, you actually need to learn 
um, a new command line tool, which is the kubectl, for example. Whereas with Docker Swarm, you actually have the same Docker command line that you use with Docker. So you don't have uh, a need for a separate command line tool there. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. If you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.